Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. Uh, this video is, as you can tell, obviously um, a little different than normal. We're in the middle of a, um, some lockdowns and different things. So I'm with Matt Landis. We're doing this virtually. Obviously, I'm in Tennessee. He's in Pennsylvania. Um, but yeah, we want to talk about COVID-19 and some of the dynamics playing out there as it applies specifically to our people as Anabaptists. Um, so Matt, I know you've been involved in, in a number of different things. Um, why don't you start off with just introducing yourself. T tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, Matt Landis. I live in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. That is in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania with my wife, Rosalyn. And I'm a pastor at Calvary Mennonite Fellowship. And I also am the owner of Landis Technologies. We write software and do IT services. Yeah, good. So tell us specifically um, how you got involved in, in working with this crisis. Um, I know you've been involved uh, locally there uh, with Lancaster County Mennonites, trying to develop ways to respond, help people think about this crisis um, in a positive Christ-like way, I guess we could say, instead of um, just ignoring it like so many people want to do or, or other responses that we've seen as well. Walk us through some of that journey. And, and what is it actually that you're involved in? Yeah, so probably like a lot of other people, probably not unusual in going through the process of first of all, COVID what? And then next of all, I'm thinking, wait a minute, I think China has a problem. Mm -hmm. And then coming to the conclusion, wait a minute, I don't think the problem is isolated to China and it's, it's headed our direction to thinking, well, maybe we're just gonna have to pause a few days to coming to the final conclusion, this is not a two week thing, but probably a several month thing. And then the question, what do we do? What should we be doing? Right now in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, it does not seem like a, you, you drive through the roads, the only thing that's strange is that the roads are empty and that on a weekday afternoon, I look out my window and see a family all together walking down the street happily, which is a little unusual on a weekday afternoon or mm -hmm. maybe any, any time. They're not usually walking together as families. To wh what should we be doing? What as Christians? What, what, should we, what, what can we be doing and what should we be doing? And, and the other challenge of how do you find truth? You yeah. hear this, you hear that, what, what, and how do we escape the thing of, of, of having the news not, not drive fear and not drive anger that someone isn't doing something right and instead get to our Christian duty of, of serving others? How do we do that? And how do you get started? Well, I'm not, a, I'm not an emer uh, emergency personnel. I'm a businessman, and I, but I, I want to help. I want to, you know, if there's a way to help get things going, I want to do that. I want to accommodate that. And I, I assumed, you know, we're a lot of businesses are pulling a lever to just kind of slow things down, whether that means people working from home or closing your retail area to businesses that are entirely shut down. And can we harness some of that wisdom that maybe is in slow gear right now? So what we did is talk to some people and said, why don't we, as some business businessmen here in Lancaster and beyond, just have a, a Microsoft Teams meeting and discuss what are possibilities, what are options. For the record, we're speaking on March 31st. So depending on what we reference um, when you're watching this um, may have changed. I was on that call um, that we had and just to, you know, bouncing around some different ideas. But can you describe a little, little of, of what went into that call and then some of the results too that, that have come from that? Um, there specifically with the group you're involved with now. Yeah, right. And that's very ad hoc. It was not a <laughs> standing emergency. We didn't have the, what we're experiencing now. We did not have a trial run or we didn't do, we weren't doing pandemic. What do you call that? Fire drills, pandemic drills. <laughs> so, so this yeah. is, we're learning as we go. So first of all, we just said, are there businessmen? Are there, are there leaders in the area that would have interest in just discussing ideas on what could be done. And we, we had a Teams meeting, it could have just as well been Zoom, but a, a remote meeting. 
because obviously we're not gathering in big groups yeah. and just gave a couple people opportunity to give a little bit of the setting and then ask for input. What, what are people doing? And a couple of things that came from that, I, I, I heard some very good business advice, things like this is a time to be very generous with employees. Hmm. Think about other businesses, maybe not needing employees right now. Maybe you need them. Maybe there could be a temporary, a temporary switch. There was some interesting exchanges related yeah. to how you handle your business. And then more focused on things that can be done. A couple things that came up that I, I really liked. One of them was repurposing, and maybe it's not redirecting or repurposing a business that is largely shut down because of what's happening to be doing something related to helping. A couple examples that, that, that came out of that, and this didn't all happen that meeting. Some of them, we learned that the business was down and, 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 it, and it could start from there. It didn't all happen in that first discussion meeting. But the one, the one was a sewing shop that now is, as I understand, has, has a lot of work sewing gowns for different medical organizations, different hospitals, and they're doing a lot of them. Another one was a restaurant, at least in Pennsylvania, I'm not sure how all the other states are, but restaurants are, if you're not doing takeout, you're shut down. So a lot of the Italian pizza shops, they're doing takeout, so they're good to go. But if you're the kind of business that didn't, the kind of restaurant that didn't shift to takeout very well, then your, your business is down. And there was one uh, Mennonite who had a business like that who is down and they could kind of shift to match a need. And, and I didn't say that before, but one of the things we, in our meeting, we said, what do we have? What are the resources we have and what are our needs? Trying to think about those two sides. And one of the needs that we discovered in the last few days was in New York, in Bronx, there's hospitals that very much could use lunches for workers that are very, very busy, hardly have time you know, to go get food and bring that together. So on the one side, we have a sewing shop that might be kind of not so busy doing other things and now can be working on the gowns that are highly in demand at the moment. At some, time, at some point, corporations might spin up their capability to do that, but right now there's a need. And on the other side, providing those lunches for people that are needing them. So kind of diverting someone has a business that is down and kind of fit that need. Another thing that we discovered is that there's a, there's a lot of a lot of comments about you can make masks. And I'll admit mm -hmm. I was a bit skeptical. So <laughs> right. Yeah, you me, hear me as well. I was like, yeah, right, sure, sure. There's no way. Yeah. You're gonna be sewing these, you know, someone's gonna be sitting in their house sewing one of these. And I was a bit skeptical. But in in talking out of that, that same meeting, there was connections made to people, other Mennonites, Anabaptists that are living in New York City who are meeting the medical personnel in New York and they're saying, wait a minute, we need masks. Like not just a few either, because I, I was on that call as well and they were saying, we're talking thousands of masks um, just in one hospital. And they're desperate, desperately needed. Um, and so, yeah, and then out of that started some interesting conversations. So then kind of, kind of where did it morph from there? Because that seemed like a pretty specific need at the moment that y'all as a team were able to latch on to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do now have a, a, a lot of people were thinking, so number one, are masks really needed? At the moment, today, March 31, yes, mm -hmm. they are needed. And then the other problem was, well, what exactly we do, we do. Well, we have, we have a very we have a we have guidance on exactly what you need to do so what we've worked through is making the contacts in new york city getting exactly a very a very good mask that is 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 you can just use the guide and make it or use the pattern and make it get the paper you can do it and it works mm -hmm. the other thing that another idea that came out of that and this, this came pushed not from us that direction, but it came from New York, uh, one of the, one of the uh, churches in New York. They really had a burden that there's people that are in the hospital 
because families can't visit, there's this separation, they're having real hardship. I mean, some of their family members are dying and they're isolated. Is there somehow we can connect with them or that we can help in some way? And there was a, a vision for a, a, I'm gonna call it a support and encouragement hotline. So that's another thing that is in the works that, that mm-hmm. seems like there could be, a, it could be a benefit and the need there was people to actually answer the phone, phone lines. And we're finding both people that want to do that and people that are able to get the technicals going. But during the, this time when people are, they're, they're in the hospital, their families are separated, they're isolated, can, can there be a way to give some encouragement? So that's another thing that came out of that. And no one person on that phone call that we did to brainstorm would have had all the connections, but between them, just making the connections, finding out what the on the ground truth is and being able to connect with that. So what mm-hmm. do we think? We talked about the uh, small business switching. We talked about the mask need and determining that there is indeed one. And this was not only, not only let's say a, a, you know, a, a nurse or a doctor on the floor saying, hey, I need it but it actually came from the, the executive director of the hospital. So this is not, you know, mm-hmm. not a worker saying, hey, I need it, but in discussing it and meeting with them, it, was a, it, it came from the executive director. So it is a mm-hmm. need. And I think that was one of the things too, to keep in mind in these things, especially as this is a very fluid and dynamic situation, is talk to the people that are actually there. Uh, you know, I think in that case, it, yeah, it was. It was talking to, to nurses and doctors and, and executives, you know, in the hospital that said, we don't have any masks. We ran out of masks. So we're literally using, we're improvising like bandanas or just anything we can use. And I'm just thinking, can you imagine, you know, your doctor coming in to treat you and for protection, he, he can't even, he doesn't even have a surgical mask available to him. Mm-hmm. It puts the patient at risk, but then it also puts the doctor at severe risk. And if you have your doctors getting sick, who's going to be treating all the patients? And it, it just struck me as like, wow, this is a really dire situation. And, and like you were saying, this will probably change in the coming weeks as the demand is met. Um, but in the moment now, March 31st, where we are today, this is a real need in a specific place. So talking about specific hospitals in New York City, specific contacts you guys have made, First off, how can people get involved in this particular project? But more than that, how can churches that watch, people who watch all over the world, how can they get involved? What are things people can do right now that want to serve? Yeah, so if I'm thinking right, and you can help me out, Reagan, but I think you're going to have some information on Anabaptist perspectives that will give them details about what's happening right now and ways that you can just help. Right, so very yeah. Concrete. Mm-hmm. But thinking in the broader in a broader way, what, 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 can, what can you do on the ground? Because this is a kind of thing where it's, it's on the ground help is probably where it's at. And my thinking is brainstorm. I, the way to start, brainstorm and see how you can put your resources, and they're going to be different than Lancaster, Pennsylvania, perfectly fine. Brainstorm and see how you, you, the resources you have can be matched to actual needs. I'd say that's, a, that's one thing to do. The other thing is, remember that the, the conditions are very dynamic. Right now, this is March 31, we're talking about New York, but that may change in a few days. It could be a different place. Uh, very dynamic. Now masks might be needed in two weeks. Procter & Gamble or whoever the other organizations are that are going to ramp up their capacity, that might not be needed anymore. Mm-hmm. The other thing maybe to think about is Sometimes we think, great, we want to do good, so we're going to go out and buy a bunch of things to give to somebody. A thing I might give to consider is think about a business that's already down that you can pay to do what you want. So in other words, give your gift to a business, maybe a small business that doesn't have the the finances to, to be out of business for a while. So source your things through someone who already is down and they have capacity. Don't go remote and get it somewhere else. The other thing I'm thinking about, pray and look to God for wisdom. This is, I think we said it before, 
none of us have had a trial run or a drill on how to do this. So I think as Christians, look to God for wisdom on what we should do and, and in what ways there, there might be some dangerous sacrifices we need to do. And I think ask God for wisdom when we should be, to know when we should be involved in that and when we're being foolhardy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, and as an example of that, there may be some risk involved because out of these meetings, I literally just as we were starting to record this, I was getting messages um, from a team with, an, with a nonprofit that I work with that they're sending or got three people together to actually go up into New York City, right into the outbreak zone to these hospitals, work with churches there, contacts there, and serve the healthcare workers, you know, bring them lunch. You know, they don't have time to stop and go get lunch. They just don't. They're, they're at capacity in these hospitals. Um, find creative ways like that to serve. And, you know, that is at a risk um, for these people. If anything, they'll have to be quarantined when they come home. So you're talking time off work. You're talking a lot of different things. Um, and we don't know how that's going to work out. Um, creative solutions, it sounds like, is what you're, what you're asking for here. Is that right? Yeah, and maybe another, another thing to say is let's, let's not do the risky things. Let's not do unnecessary risky things. If we're going to do something, let's not just be meeting, uh, you know, having a group get together to just hang out. If we're going to get together as a group, take precautions, but have it be something that's serving others. Mm -hmm. So the running thread through, through this whole thing that we're discussing, because we've covered a lot of different angles, it's basically let's find ways to love our neighbors in the midst of, of un, really unprecedented events. I mean, we've never really faced anything quite like this before. You know, it's unique. Uh, yeah. Is that maybe a good way of saying it? Yeah, people are complaining about the unprecedented word, but really it is. You know, when, mm -hmm. when have we had hospitals that didn't have the supplies they needed in the United States in the 21st century? It's, it's just unusual. That's so. a good point. So maybe find, um, you know, maybe uh, just practically thinking, you know, maybe call up your hospital. Um, people could talk to their local healthcare providers and say, what do you need? How, how are ways we can prepare? Um, and I think you mentioned this too, you know, we're going to have a, a webpage on our website linking to the group that, that you guys are, you know, that, that you're involved with to that specific project. And then you, hopefully our audience can, can see what you all are doing, model that in their own communities. Um, and inspired to maybe do something similar. Maybe their hospital needs um, hospital gowns. For example, where I am in Tennessee, the hospital currently, um, one of my friends who works there was saying they're out of hospital gowns. So far, they've only had one COVID-19 patient. So it's like, oh my, you know, what if an outbreak would happen here? There's no way they would be supplied. Um, so that's something my church is, is looking into doing. And, and hopefully other people watching this can, can get creative with solutions like that as well. Yeah, and one, one thing that we've noticed in working with employee level workers at hospitals and healthcare places, you sometimes, if you're helping them, you, you may get a connection to let's say an executive, that has happened. So you're giving something you know, directly to workers and you know, someone higher up in the hospital say, wait a minute, I, I'd like to get connected and, and help with this. So yeah, help where you're at, help with mm -hmm. you. If you know a need, help it. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's all the questions that I had. I feel like we've covered an awful lot. There's probably a lot of things we missed. So if people have questions, they can email us or comment um, and check out what you guys are doing through our website. Um, is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap it up? No, I just think this is a time, a, a critical time for Christians, for the church, for Mennonites to, to really be serving there, there's a time to be isolating, and I also think there'll be a time for us to really serve and uh, serve others. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great note to end on. I, re I really appreciate it, Matt, and hopefully this has inspired a lot of people to go and help their neighbors in creative ways. So, yeah, I really appreciate your time, appreciate the work you're doing, and blessings in that. Yeah, thank you.